Now, it's hard to measure the effectiveness of cloud seeding. That's adding a chemical to clouds to increase rain or snowfall. The weather doesn't follow human plans, and getting the right conditions for repeated scientific studies is hard to do. But though the side effects of cloud seeding are still unknown, and though it's also not clear if there's an economic benefit to doing so, new science is shedding light on its potential. It's not as if you guys are creating clouds out of nowhere. You actually target storm systems. If there's no clouds in the sky that have any moisture in them, then uh, we can't do anything. What we can do is tap into what's there and assist Mother Nature. Kind of like a steroid kick for the clouds or something. Exactly. <laughs> In all of its forms, water powers our very existence. A droplet's epic journey from sky to sea is an elegant loop that sustains all life on this planet. But today, about a billion people are living in water-scarce areas. In the United States, there's California, where in one single year, a historic drought cost the state over 10,000 jobs and nearly $2 billion in lost revenue. But what if we could hack into the water cycle and unlock more precious water from the clouds. A decades-old technology, long shunned by science, may hold the key. Since the 1946 experiments of Dr. Vincent Schaefer, we have known that some clouds can be modified through seeding to yield additional precipitation. What exactly is cloud seeding? Cloud seeding is really an enhancement of the natural precipitation process. So basically you're just making the storm more efficient, getting more moisture out of it. Exactly it. To do that, pilots target clouds full of moisture and eject small amounts of an inert chemical. Then the water in the cloud condenses around the new particles and gets heavy, falling to the ground as precipitation. Brian Kindred is one of the company's pilots. He steers right into the heart of storms to fire off a special kind of pyrotechnic. And what's inside of these guys? Uh, it's a silver iodide mixture. The idea is that we'll be above some liquid water, and as it's falling through, it'll turn it to snow so it can fall out of the cloud. Since the 1940s, people have been seeding clouds and watching the effects with their own eyes. But there's always been something missing, the cold, hard scientific evidence to back it up. In 2017, the National Science Foundation funded a study to determine cloud seeding's effectiveness, Weather Modification International provided the planes. A team of scientists set out into the Idaho mountains with Doppler radars and state-of-the-art weather stations to record what happens on the ground when planes above are cloud seeding. Radar images show how ice crystals formed in the clouds in the exact pattern that weather modifications pilots were flying. But there's still questions about its long-term effects. How does making it rain in Idaho affect what happens a state over? Who owns the precious water in those clouds? And the effects of silver iodide on the environment are still debated. For now, national weather bodies have yet to endorse the practice of cloud seeding. I think that people get a little anxious when they hear about people sort of playing the weather god, which in a way you guys are kind of doing here. We're not really playing god. I think that's really overstating uh, what we're doing. Human activity affects the weather all of the time. We're being very specific and targeted and environmentally friendly in what we're doing to enhance the natural, natural precipitation, enhance the natural process. It turns out that some companies will pay millions to enhance the weather. Companies like Idaho Power. The company serves more than 500,000 customers with a network that includes 17 hydroelectric power plants. To them, water is money. Let's do this. Idaho Power has invested over $3 million in a cloud seeding program to increase the snowpack at the state's highest peaks. Why is it so essential to increase the snowpack up here? Because we're on the front end and the top end of the food chain for water. So that's what feeds our streams and rivers and feeds our hydro system later in the summer and fall. And that's really when we need that extra energy. 
How much precipitation are we talking about in regards to the increase in snowpack as a result of these systems? We're seeing generally in that 8 to 15 percent increase. How many homes can that power? Like, what are you getting out of that? On average, that's in excess of 60,000 homes. According to Idaho Power, last year's cloud seeding program has provided a 300 percent return. That's $9 million worth of water that otherwise might have never fallen on these mountaintops. 